Hello ladies and gentlemen, Nick here and welcome to my review of Doctor Who The Crotons. The fourth and halfway point of Doctor Who Season 6. Uh, fourth story of Doctor Who Season 6. So we're halfway through Patrick Troughton's last season and the last season of the 1980s. And in my opinion, The Crotons is the Dominators, but done right. Uh, for starters, you've got these robotic creatures um, basically uh, dominating. Uh, the ind indigenous uh, population, um, although at this time round it's just robots and there's only two of them compared to several quarks working for two dominators. And you've got this oppressed society, uh, well, the society is oppressed and the Doctor Jamie and Zoe have to free them. There is plenty of differences though. To start as the gongs aren't as peaceful as the uh, Dolkins. They will fight back if uh, if, when they realise the truth, they will, they'll fight back in one way or another, even though some of them do feel like they do have to continue obeying so that they do not get destroyed, and the Doctor sees that uh, they've got a point there who uh, have to stop them another way. And also, no, that's about it. <laughs> um, and but they've also got a nuclear wa radiation based wasteland outside, or at least that's what they're led to believe as the Crotons, uh, well it may have been at one point, but the Crotons continue to make sure that they don't go outside because nobody goes into the wasteland. That's where the Crotons get to uh, kill the uh, humans that they take the uh, brain energy out of and the waste material that is rejected is just left out to be killed. Um, and the Crotons are trying to get enough of this energy to try and get away from the planet. That's all their plan. And when the Doctor and uh, Zoe, I was about to say Jamie for a reason, uh, the Doctor and Zoe take a test, they are proven to be the two mo the best students of the Gongs. Maybe the, the uh, Crotons should have gone with four students at a time instead of just two. And Doctor and Zoe's mental energy that they're trying to use is what they want to take off the planet. Although they keep saying, Shh, uh, uh, Depressing the Doctor and Zoe with uh, death, and that completely contradicts their own plan. I think the Doctor points that out at one point. I wish he pointed out a few more times. It's like when the Doctor say, "You will be exterminated," and the the prisoners are needed for something. Someone, usually the Doctor or a companion, will point out. But if you do that, then you won't have anybody to help you with your plan. Um, I don't know if that has actually been a case with the Daleks. It's been cases with other monsters, I'm sure. Um, certainly here, it's one of the cases. Um, the Gongs, which are uh, the indigenous people. A um, couple of them, after realising the truth, want to fight back. There's Elik, played by Philip Maddock, who wants to lead this rebellious uh, group. Uh, halfway through the story, he takes over as the council. And then there's the more peaceful leader, who is trying to find other ways to stop them. Firstly, he's continued to uh, work with the Protons to, to uh, well, supposedly follow the same ways as the Gongs, not really work with the Protons, but follow the same ways as the Gongs in order to stop them being destroyed, and he'll find other ways to help Danish the machine. And the Doctor and Zoe and Jamie get this chemist guy to make a chemical to destroy the machine and a chemical to poison the supply, which uh, Zoe eventually does. So he is a very good character in this story. She does, she gets quite a few good moments as well as destroying the uh, crotons and um, being a great test score on the thing. She does some great moments. Similarly, Jamie has a quite a few good moments when he follows the crow, uh, follows the two in, and sneaks the ball around the croton base. He's stuck there for a bit of time, but he uses his intelligence to know a little bit more about them. He also takes on a very irritating gong in single combat earlier on as he's get, they're all getting a bit annoyed with the Gong's attitude and upon their first arrival and they're trying to say something but the Gong's keep saying OH THEY'RE OUTSIDERS! THIS THAT! BUT WE'RE TRYING TO TELL YOU WE MUST KILL THEM! Or something along those lines basically when they're trying to, trying to explain something or at least just trying to talk they're cut off mid-sentence by another Gong bits and then eventually try to be taken out and maybe killed, but Jamie then uh, challenges that uh, the main Gong uh, to single combat and wins without any weapons. So nice work, Jamie. That was actually a pretty satisfying scene. 
uh, well, the satisfying moment of that scene. Um, and um, there is some annoying characters like that guy, and Elick can be a little bit annoying, but he's not terribly annoying. And when he captures the Doctor and Zomi, they have to, they take them by force. Uh, he says, Elick says he can help the Doctor and Zoe, and then and the Doctor says, oh good, because he's trying to get back to the machine, into the machine, and Elix men's just grabbed him. He could have just had him just step out, and the Doctor said, hey, there's, there's no need for any you, to bring us, we'll, we're coming uh, gladly, just point us in the right direction. Um, you, you, don't, you can escort us, but please don't uh, drag us or push us around or anything, we're coming willingly, okay guys? Okay, come on. It's, it's this way, isn't it? So yeah, it just doesn't need. They don't need to uh, be manhandled. I think it's the word. And Elik may even know this as he's coming right behind them. He's, it's, doesn't, it's not that necessary. I mean, if the Doctor and Zoe weren't wanting to go back to into the machine, that makes sense. And the reason Elik's doing this is because the protons then threaten. Uh, it's not threaten. Offers to let's say they they leave if they get these the Doctor and Zoe back. <laughs> Of course, this could potentially be in a complete, utter lie, or the fact that the gongs would be spared was probably a lie, because they would blow up on takeoff, or the crotons would kill them anyway. Uh, either way, it still doesn't quite work uh, with uh, uh, the stuff with Elik and the Doctor and Zoe, and the manhandling just doesn't quite work. And the crotons, we don't get to save their reveal for a cliffhanger. Instead, we, they, I think somewhere between... Uh, halfway through part two, and certainly in the second half of part two, they just appear, basically. Um, yeah, I think it's one of them comes up out of the uh, liquid thing that they've got, or is reviving, but it's not a big surprise, it's not a big shock when we see one of them for the first time, they're just there, as opposed to, say, the quarks earlier on, uh, or the Cybermen in the Invasion Part 4, it's not a big cliffhanger. Even if you suspected what they look like, well, that was in the case of the Cybermen anyway, uh, what well, not look like, but who they were. In the Crotons case, uh, they, they just knew that they were silver men, but you didn't know they had diamonds on their heads, they looked, they looked like giant robots, they had these claw things, you didn't know what they were looking like. Uh, here's a uh, Croton, by the way, I hope you can see that. Um, in the fall from a long distance. Yeah, it just didn't... They didn't build it up as a surprise. They just appeared when they were ready. The voices sounded menacing, though. I'll give them that. But not terribly great. I mean, they were better than the Quarks and the Invasion Cybermen voices, including the Cyber Planner. I don't think they were great, but I think they were good and... Well, yeah, they'll, they'll do for this story. Could have been better, but oh well. Um... Yeah, and that's about it. The production design looks pretty great, especially inside the Crotons ship. The Crotons shell themselves actually look pretty great. And the story is decent, and everyone does a really good job in their roles, especially Philip Maddock as Enoch, who uh, my uh, book about uh, book of Doctor Who journals... Um, journal of Popular Television, the first journal, the one I used in my... Uh, one of my uh, university things, which I've mentioned in my review of the invasion. Um, it's mentioned that Enoch was kind of like a second villain, in a way, after the Crotons, and I can see why why they thought that. So he does act quite villainly, as does his followers, especially that guy from part one that Jamie took on, who's helping Enoch now. Um, but I not for the same reasons as the Crotons, so I could see why they considered the second being villains, but for completely different reasons. They just want to uh, fight the Crotons, although not very logically the way they're doing it. But, oh well. And um, Maddox does a great performance here. And uh, he'll go on to do more great performances as both villains and non-villains in the future. Uh, he's already proved himself to be a great villainous role in Dalek Invasion of Earth, uh, Dalek's Invasion of 2150 AD, and now he's finally on the main in the main show. And we're gonna, certainly going to be seeing him again later this season. And then twice in Tom Baker's era. Okay, so that's the Crotons. In conclusion, the Crotons is a very... Well, it's not. I wouldn't say it's a very good... It's a good, uh, decent, short 
and pretty uh, enjoyable in quite a few places. Um, story. It's the shortest episode-wise of this sh uh, season. However, if you want to take time-wise into account, then I think the Mind Robber might just about beat it. Um, maybe just a little bit. Um, but certainly for um, uh, episodes-wise, it's the shortest one. Um, like I said, I think the Mind Robber is actually technically shorter. And it's still a really good, really uh, likeable story there are some not so great bits but it's forgivable and it's got some good moments and robert holmes has done a pretty great story for his first go and therefore i'm going to give the crotons a eight out of ten I think The Crotons is a very good story. I don't think it's perfect. I don't think it's amazing. But I think it's good. Um, pretty, it's a pretty good story so far. Season 9, whilst it's getting... It's not going from strength to strength, but we're still getting pretty decent and very good stories this season. Um, so, yeah, and this one's just another one. And next time, we'll be looking at another great story, The Seeds of Death, which is the second Ice Warrior story. Now, after the previous one, I was very disappointed in the treatment of the characters, especially in their first go. But I do think this next story, The Seeds of Death, will be a much better Ice Warrior story, and the characters will be much better. They're not just being bastards for the sake of being bastards. They've actually got an evil plan to actually carry out, and we get a bit more Ice Warrior, at least... Uh, character development, I would say, probably. I'll, I'll rewatch the story later. Um, but certainly they're just doing more stuff than what they did in the Ice Warriors and actually have a reason to be evil rather than just being evil. So, there we go. So next time, the Seeds of Death. Robert Holmes will meanwhile return with the god awful space pirates that will follow it. So, first time is a good time, but the second time will be complete utter shit. Uh, but thankfully his third time, Spearhead from Space, will completely redeem himself over the problems that we had with the Space Pirates, and maybe even the Protons, in some people's opinion. Yeah, Space Pirates, not Space Pirates, that's the worst one. Spearhead onwards, the majority of his scripts are great, or very good. At, but uh, I think that, apart from a couple, most of them are as good, as, if not better, than the Protons, and then the rest are either better or not quite as good. Uh, but none of them as bad as Space Pirates. Anyway, that's it from the Crotons. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. <laughs>